<clears throat> so today I want you to think a little bit about false teachers and false Christs. We have reached a point in the church where not only are we afraid to call out false teachers, but most people believe that it's wrong to call out false teachers. It's wrong to ever judge anybody, anytime. <clears throat> Two things. First of all, um, Jesus, when he says the famous verse that everybody likes to quote, judge not, that's only the first part of that verse, and it's followed by several more verses where Jesus not only tells us to judge, but tells us how to judge with righteous judgment so what Jesus is saying there isn't don't judge at all ever that you can't judge anybody what he is saying is judge righteously judge with God's standards don't use human standards don't use your own biases and your own prejudices he's not saying don't judge he's he's saying don't judge like a human judges the other thing is, Paul tells us that we are specifically within the body of Christ, that we are commanded to judge. <clears throat> and both of them specifically judge religious leaders. Jesus stands on the steps of the temple and calls out people like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the Sanhedrin. He says things like, you brood of vipers, you whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones. I don't see how you can take that as non-judgmental. Jesus judged these men. And they were the religious leaders of his day. And you say, well, that's Jesus. He's God. He has the right to judge. Okay, fine. Let's talk the Apostle Paul. Not only did the Apostle Paul tell us to judge within the church, <clears throat> and <clears throat> give us a set of church disciplinary guidelines about how to handle things within the church when you have a problem when somebody is doing something sinful and they won't stop, you take it, you, you go to that, that person one-on-one -on -one and then with one or two others and then to the elders and then to the whole church and if they still won't change their behavior, you kick them out of the church and you treat them like they're a pagan, which doesn't mean that you are mean or hurtful to them it means you treat them like they're somebody that's not saved, that needs Jesus, that needs to be loved, but they're still somebody that needs to be Jesus, and they're still somebody that should not be part of the assembly, that should not be part of the church, okay? But he goes beyond that. <clears throat> Paul not only calls out false teachers, but he calls out seven or eight people, can't remember exactly how many, and it doesn't really matter, but it's more than one or two, calls them out by name and says they're false teachers and they need to be dealt with. Folks, that is judging. And Paul did it and Jesus did it, and they're commanded us to do it too. Now, the other thing that I want to bring up before I close out this video, and this is something I want you to think about. We are warned multiple times about false Christs. 
and mostly this is somebody coming and claiming that they are Christ, I don't know, reincarnated or that he's come back or whatever. But <clears throat> I think it can legitimately be applied to saying that Jesus is not somebody or is somebody who he was not. Yes, Jesus loves everybody, but he wants everyone to repent. Let me give you an example. The woman at the well, or not the woman at the well, the woman caught in adultery. Well, you can do the woman at the well too. We'll get to her in a second. The woman caught in adultery. Yes, Jesus is merciful. He tells them, let the one of you among you who has no sin cast the first stone. And they slowly walk away because they all know that they have sin. But he doesn't just tell the woman, okay, you're forgiven. He condemns her sin. He does it in a loving manner, but he points out her sin and condemns it. He says, go and sin no more. Something very similar with the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Jesus is very loving to her. And he doesn't even say what her sin is. He just asks, where's your husband? Knowing full well what her situation is, how many men she's been with, that kind of thing. And the woman says, I don't have a husband. And he says, you're right. You've had five husbands and the man that you're with is not your husband. He calls out what is wrong in her life. He does it in a loving manner, but he does it. He calls it out. He doesn't let her go off thinking that what she's doing is okay. And quite honestly, he doesn't tell either of these women, it's okay. I get you. And before you think I'm just picking on women... He does the same thing with men that he meets. The rich young ruler, he tells him to sell everything. Um, others, you know, Matthew, when he's called as a tax collector, he doesn't allow Matthew to still continue ripping people off. He requires change. So back to Paul and, and him saying that we need to be aware of false Christs. Anybody that's teaching that Jesus gets you as you are and that it's okay to continue to stay in your sin, to not change, that it's okay who you are they're teaching a false Christ. They're teaching a Jesus that doesn't exist. Yes, Jesus was always loving. But this is the same Jesus that, again, stood on the temple steps and said, You brood of vipers, you whitewashed tombs. It's the same Jesus that sat down and braided a whip and drove the money changers out of the temple, flipped over tables, set the animals free, and cleansed the temple. And it is the same Jesus who says that he is coming back as a righteous judge carrying a sword. Yes, Jesus loves. Jesus' love is the greatest love that ever has been or ever will be. But part of being loving is to correct. It's not loving if I let my children do whatever they want. If I let my daughter touch the hot stove and burn herself because I don't want to be judgmental of what she's doing. And if she wants to, to touch the hot stove, it's her business. That is not loving. 
a loving, just God who is a just God and meets out punishment because he is just and because he is loving, wants us to change. He wants us to be born again. He wants us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And so like I talked about yesterday, yes, he does get us. But A, we need to make sure that we get him. And B, we need to understand that part of his love is that he requires change. He requires repentance. He requires holiness. That he does not accept you as you are. He accepts you in spite of who you are so that he can change you from the inside out so that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and the Spirit can do its job of convicting you of sin and righteousness. And the Holy Spirit is just as as holy as Jesus and the Father and he will want you to change and he will cause you to change. Don't believe in the false Christ that is being presented in the media. When you think about Jesus, yes, think about love, but also think about his justice and that he judged and that he told us to judge righteously. You have to look at all of the scriptures, not just the parts that you like, not just the parts that are warm and fuzzy, not just the parts that make us feel good, because you can feel good on the road to hell. I'm tired of hearing people present a false Christ. I'm tired of people not willing to be, not, not being willing to call out religious teachers like Joel Osteen, who are false teachers and only teach motivational fluff. I'm tired of prosperity gospel teachers that teach God wants to bless you monetarily and health and all these things, but doesn't require you to change. I'm tired of teachers like Kenneth Copeland that teach that you are little gods and can speak things into existence. These are false teachers. Paul was not afraid to call out the false teachers, and Jesus wasn't afraid to call out false teachers, and we should not be afraid to call out false teachers, including those who are in the He Gets Me organization. Because if you think that that's what Jesus is like all the time, then you really haven't thought about who Jesus is.